Now, out of the gate, EVNG does not come with any images. That's not necessarily a new thing. This is part of emulation software. But what we have to do is we have to provide our own images that we legally have access to in order for EVNG to start emulating these devices. So if you have access to legal images, you can download them from their source and upload them into EVNG get them up and running, and now we can start emulating our hardware. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore downloading an image from our legally licensed Cisco download section. We'll upload it into EVNG, verify that it works, and test it all out. This is how you can load images into EVNG. So get ready, this is gonna be a big one, and it's gonna be a lot of fun as we finally get EVNG up and running with some network devices. Let's go. So yeah, we want to use EVNG to emulate devices, right? That's going to be an important thing. Check it out. If I actually, from my EVNG terminal right now, I'll choose to add a new lab. I'll call this Knox Demo, something like that, and click Save. It takes me into the lab environment. So if I wanted to add, say, switches or routers, I would right-click. I would add a node but there's nothing here. And that's because we have to provide our own images. We have to have legal access. We have to have the rights to those images to use those images in the first place. That's why EVNG can't provide them for us. So if you have access to these images, you can bring those images into EVNG and get started. And one of the quickest ways that you can get access and rights to these images is through Cisco's Modeling Labs tool. If you've purchased that, then you can use that. Now, there are some other tools that we need in order to make this happen. We're going to need to first SSH into EVNG for a couple reasons. The first is so that we can accept the thumbprint of the key pairs that exchange within SSH. Then we also need a tool like WinSCP so that we can send the files into EVNG into the correct place. So first, we're going to accept the thumbprint. Then we're going to upload the files, and then we have a command that we need to run. We're going to call this fix permissions, and we do this from the SSH terminal. At that point, we'll be able to use the images. So make sure you've downloaded an SSH client like PuTTY or Secure CRT, as well as an FTP client like WinSCP or FileZilla. Now let's talk about where to go to get the images that you need. I mentioned Cisco Modeling Labs. This is learningnetworkstore.cisco.com, and I've purchased Cisco Modeling Labs. If I go to my account now that I've logged in, I actually see the Cisco Modeling Labs professional right here. I'll click the download button, and it takes me into the download section for Cisco Modeling Labs. Now, once it's taken me into this screen where I see the CML Personal 2, what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to pull the files out of an ISO file. So what we do is under all releases, we see version 2.0, and then we click on CML Personal 2.0. And the file that we're looking for is this ISO file, this refplatp blah, 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 blah file. It's around six gigs. So I'll download that. I'll accept the license agreement. And we'll let the download happen here because I'm lucky enough to have gigabit internet. This should only take me about 10 minutes. We'll let it run and come back to it when it's done. So I've gotten done downloading this ISO file, which contains all of these images in it that we need to pull out. Beyond that, I've done a little bit of prep work. I downloaded and installed PuTTY, and I downloaded and installed WinSCP. And I also have EVNG up and running. So all the pieces are there. It's time to put the puzzle together and make this thing come to life. So the next step that we need to do is we need to get the specific images out of that ISO file so that we can put them into EVNG. And that's what we're talking about next. In my downloads folder, I see that ISO file that we just downloaded, that refplap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose open with and then Windows Explorer. Windows Explorer has the ability to open ISO files. So these viral base images, guess where the images are located? They're right there in viral base images. Now the images that I care about that I want to play with today, I want to make sure I copy ISO V layer two, ISO V, which is going to be my layer three routers. And how about an ASA firewall? So let's copy these three. This is going to be a firewall, a router, and a switch. And I'll say copy. And then on my C drive, I've created a staging folder called Cisco Images, and I'll say paste. There we go. They've pasted the folders with the files contained in them into those specific directories. Now, the next thing I want to do is launch PuTTY so that I get a session started into that terminal of EVNG. I see here that EVNG is running on 10.10.21.133. So let's SSH into 10.10.21.133. I'll say open. 
It asked me to accept the thumbprint, which I'm going to say yes. My login, in this case, because we're accessing the console and not the front end GUI, is root. My password is whatever I set during setup. So there we go. Now I'm on the console of my EVNG server and I've accepted the thumbprint. Now it's time to actually get the images loaded onto Eve. And this is a critical talking point. When EVNG is looking for the images, it looks for folders with a specific name. So check this out. From EVNG's website, eve-ng.net, we can go to documentation and then we can go into Kimu image namings. That's the little third section here. And we want to scroll down just a hair until we see this grid. Now let's pick on that ASA firewall for just one second because I think this is really important. When Eve is scanning through all of its folders, I'm going to draw like a little folder here and is scanning through all of them. It's looking for folders that are named like this. So when it reaches ASAV hyphen, it knows that images contained inside that folder are for ASAs. And then beyond that, the images themselves have to have this exact name. So let's start with the ASA and walk through this particular process. I'm going to open up WinSCP and clear my screen a little bit. And on a new site, I'm going to log into 10.10.21.133. The port number is still 22. And I'm using the console access again, the root username. So I'll say log in and I'm going to accept the keys. Now here's the kicker. It launches me into this directory right here, which is not where I want to be. This is not where I want to upload my images. So I'll hit the little dot dot and it takes me up into the root directory. The path that I want to follow, which is also popping up on the screen right now, is opt, then unit lab, then add-ons, and then Kimu. Now this is where we want to put our images and they again, they have to follow this naming structure. So for our ASA, we're going to create a folder that starts with ASAV hyphen, all lowercase. Again, this is running off Ubuntu and everything is case sensitive in Linux. So right here in the white space, I'm going to choose to create a new folder. We're going to call it ASAV hyphen. And then we want to specify the correct version so that we know which version of ASAV we're working with. Now I can see on my other screen here, I've got my Cisco images folder pulled up and this is version 9.12.2. So I'll call this 9-12-2 and click OK. From my C drive, I'll go into my ASAV2 and the QCOW2 file is the one that we want to bring over into EVNG. So I'll drag this onto my ASAV folder that I just created. We see the transfer taking place, but again, remember, we're not done with the ASA. Not only does the folder have to meet a specific naming structure, but the image itself has to meet a specific naming structure. So if I jump back in here, we're just going to go into my ASA folder. We're going to click on it, rename, and it's vert, V-I-R-T-I-O-A. I press enter, and that does the trick for my ASA. Let's repeat the steps for iOS V and iOS V layer 2. Now this is the next catchy thing about iOS V and iOS V layer 2 is that they're listed in EVNG as V iOS. See if I scroll all the way down, these are the two that I'm looking for here. I have V iOS, which is my router, and V iOS layer 2, which is my switch. So I know that my folders have to begin with VIOS and VIOS layer 2. And beyond that, I can look ahead and see that I also have to have that vert IOA one more time. So if I bring WinSCP up one more time, I'll click on the dot dot to take myself out of the ASAV folder. And now I'm going to create two new folders. The first one is going to be VIOS hyphen, because we know that's what it has to be called. And I can see here that my version is 158-3. So I'll say 158-3 and press enter. And now I'll create another new folder, call it VIOS L2 2019 and press enter. I'll start with the layer three router. Again, I'm going to grab that QCOW folder and bring it over to VIOS. I'll double click into VIOS and we're going to rename it to VERT IOA and press enter. And now my layer three router is handled. I'll jump back out of this and I'm going to bring my layer 2 switch over into the layer 2 folder and of course rename that into vert IOA. Now at this point you would think we're all set. 
but we're not. There's one more step that we need to make happen, and I'll show you where we can go to make this happen. And this is also going to set you up for success whenever you want to branch out of just these three types of devices. If I jump back to the documentation one more time, you can see on the screen here these how-tos. This is how to import every single one of these types of images. So you can see there's all sorts of images that we can import here from all sorts of vendors. Now, one thing is in common with just about every one of these devices is that we need to fix the permissions that are on each one of these devices. So let's click on Cisco ASAV for just a moment. And I'm actually going to skip down to the very last step. Step five, clean and fix permissions. You're pretty much going to have to run this every single time you upload a new image into EVNG. So I'm going to copy this little code right here. I'll right click and choose copy. I'll bring up my PuTTY console. I'll right click to paste it in and press enter. Takes a second or two to validate that everything is rocking and rolling. And next thing I know, there's no errors thrown here and we are rocking and rolling. Now do note that this won't work on EVNG Pro unless you've licensed EVNG Pro first. This should work just fine in the community edition. So now at this point, when I right click on my nodes, I actually see the ASAV is now listed here and I see the image that's selected. And when I scroll down and click save, check it out. There's my ASAV. I'll right click and choose nodes one more time. And when I choose Cisco V iOS router, I see the iOS image that's been listed here. I can choose to save this. I can connect the two together by just dragging and dropping the little ethernets together. And then lastly, on the more action section, I can choose start all nodes. Once the nodes turn green, that means they're coming to life. I can actually click on them to bring up the console. And there it is. The nodes themselves are coming to life and we've now gotten images brought into EVNG. So that's how you get images brought into EVNG. Start your first lab and get them up and running. Thanks for stopping by y'all. I'll see you in the next one.